Okay, welcome everybody. Um, what we're going to do tonight is we are going to have a, a brief presentation on a disability support club fund, uh, Sports for All, um, put in by a dormant account fund and administered by Sport Ireland. Um, what, we, what I'll do is as I'm going, people will join the session. Uh, we have someone else coming in here. So I'll just give instructions as I go, if that's cool. Um, Megan, welcome. If you can hear us, give us a thumbs up or a little message in the chat box. Um, if you just pop in your club name as well, Megan, that'd be great. So yeah, effectively what we're going to do tonight is we are going to be talking about this grant for clubs. Um, it centers around um, inclusion, um, including anybody from the population, particularly those with disability within your club. The, um, the details of which I'll get into uh, during it. Uh, the idea is to do about maybe 30 minutes, um, me presenting to you guys, and then I've reserved 30 minutes for you guys to take it over. Um, you can be as curious as possible. You can go into as much detail as possible or as little as possible. It's no problem. Um, I'll provide you guys with my contact details as well. So you can follow up with me afterwards. Um, that's that's pretty much it uh, in terms of um, housekeeping. Technology isn't always reliable. So if you drop out, if your internet goes down, if mine goes down as well, um, no worries just use the link that i sent you that you got in here in the first place on to rejoin uh, and i'll readmit you similarly if uh, mine drops i'll restart it um and then just jump back in if that's okay um we all okay on zoom everybody's yeah fair, fairly familiar so um i'll just crack on then um brilliant so Going to start sharing my screen and I'm just going to launch into it, guys. Um, like I said at the beginning, uh, just stop me as we go. Um, if you have anything in particular, we can uh deal with it uh, as we go. So, yeah, effectively, like I said, club info session, these are some of the partners involved Sport Ireland, Dorman the Council, and the IABA. Um, yeah, so we will get started. Game of the particular fund, um, it's the first of its kind. It's never been administered like this before, but to encourage as many, uh, not just boxing clubs, but particularly boxing clubs to avail of the grant. That's my job. That's my aim here is to try and get as many of you clubs to apply for this grant as possible. Um, the underlying principle there, generally speaking about funding is the more you apply for, the more is seen from the upper levels that there's a need and therefore they'll divert more funding to that in the future and more and more so that stretches all the way up through obviously the IBA, sport ireland uh, the department of sports um government and all all sorts of upper levels so this is there's larger pictures at, at play here so this is why we host things like this to make it as easy as possible and to overcome as many barriers that our clubs have to accessing this funding. Um, other aims can provide general information on the funding. Uh, for you guys, like I said, uh, with the second half of this, to share ideas uh, as to what you guys hope to apply for. Uh, deadline is this Friday, 29th of August, 5 p.m. Um, and the idea tonight is to guide you through the application. Um, and as I as you mentioned there, anything I can't answer, um, I'll note as we go, and then I'll circulate that later, um, as and when. Um, okay, uh, I'll get into things that I particularly can't answer in in the presentation. But yeah, uh, who's it open to? All IABA affiliated clubs and units. That's clubs, county boards, provincial councils. Um, uh, we effectively accept your uh, applications and we forward them all to Sport Ireland in uh, one document. Um, the funds won't be drawn down uh, until further governance issues are resolved, which was communicated in the initial communication on this, but also um, I suppose something that's quite uh, apparent at the moment 
with uh, the EGM that took place in July. Um, there was effectively a, a, a ban, if you will, on access to further funding for the IABA until certain governance uh, issues were resolved. Um, we went back to Sport Ireland with that and asked, um, what does this entail for this particular fund and for our clubs? Um, they communicated to us that clubs are eligible to apply and we are eligible to forward those applications on to Sport Ireland. So with that being said, we encourage you all to please submit applications. Uh, the funds won't expire. So if there are issues on the other end, um, once those uh, applications have been accepted and approved by Sport Ireland, they'll remain there until they're effectively released. Okay, so uh, like I said at the beginning, quick overview of the fund. 2 million euro provided uh, for disability supports for, for clubs. Um, cracking opportunity for uh, inclusive programs and support people with a disability. Um, the underlined there, I've got that underlined a couple of times in this presentation, initiation and or enhancement of disability specific activities. Again, gonna go into specifics on that a little bit later, but these are the general say themes as to what this funding is for. Um, and like I said, we'll, we'll submit a consolidated application on behalf of our clubs to Sport Ireland. And it's not known if the fund will continue into the future. Um, yeah, that's it. Anything there, guys? We good so far? Just give us a thumbs up or a... Can I just come in there for a second, of course. Uh, James? Please, Gabe, yeah. Just, um, I have a disability myself. I'm an amputee. Um, so and uh, and I do a lot of the coaching with disabilities and that. Now, twenty twenty five is all national governing sports bodies to uh, endorse this inclusion and so forth. Uh, this is what Sport Ireland are recommending. So, I uh, I wouldn't be too sure they can actually put a year's time frame on that, and I would I would actually question it. Um. There's the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities was ratified in this country in 2018. Uh, it was implemented or signed in in 2019, but it hasn't been fully implemented. And 2025 is the current task of the minister in question for full implementation. So they cannot do it on a one off. You know, this is going on four years as it is. They haven't put any funding in it. So they have now, from now to 2025, actually to ring fence funding for it. And just the other thing there, and the main thing with most premises, and this is across the board in sport, public areas, doesn't really matter, is accessibility. Um, and that's, if you can't get into it, you can't participate in it. That's one of the... The main things, and I'm sorry, just to be boring people with this. Oh, you absolutely are not, and uh, and you're actually giving me a lot of food for thought here, Gabe. Do you mind? Do you mind just circling back to the start, if 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 you don't mind, and just uh, if you could just let us know what you're referring to is happening in 2025. Is that the national? Uh, no, it's it's full implementation of the United Nations Convention on the rights of persons with disabilities. It's the UNCRPD. This is the main document. It's, it's not Irish policy, it's United Nations policy. Very good, very good. And do you think that this grant is uh, their first, first step of implementing this? Uh, it is, and it's just, you see, uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of this is written by able-bodied people for people with disabilities. It should be the other way around. Um, and one of the main aims of that convention is individualization of a disability. No two disabilities are the same. And that's why it has to be more flexible and disability friendly. It's kind of the person who wants to come to the club or whatever, you really ask them, what do they want to do? It's not um, our opinion forced on them as in, you know, the other way around. They, and that's yeah. just, uh, it kind of, this is what I get day in, day out. I'm actually a county councillor as well. 
and I'm chair of the Galway Sports Partnership as well through that. So I am fairly familiar with the uh, Sport Ireland. And again, people get the impression, you know, the Irish Wheelchair Association, they're not, they're, uh, they're only a service provider, whereas, you know, the representative body would be the dis uh, people with disabilities themselves. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, Gabe, appreciate that. Thanks very much for that. Um, we will all be applying to you for grants in the future. <laughs> Come on. No. <laughs> and, and Galway is one of the few that actually, um, they are fairly progressive in them and I can only, but, you know, some of the training and so forth. And I, there is a workshop tomorrow night, I think, you know, with, uh, on the disabilities through the IABA, but CARA are kind of the main ones for disability inclusion and um, a lot of the structuring for national governing bodies, such as the IABA, the IRFU, GA, the whole lot of them are actually doing their training through them. And it's coaching with autism, disability inclusion training. And um, there's various different ones, but um, again, it's, it's only starting to appear in national governing bodies now. Uh, you're, ste but... you're stealing my thunder here. <laughs> so, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to shut up now, James. <laughs> no, no, it's really interesting. It really is. No, I, I agree have with a, Debbie. a disabled brother, and I, what you're saying, even though he's he's severely disabled, like he wouldn't be able to do any sports. But it's very interesting. I I agree totally with what you're saying. They don't people that aren't disabled or haven't got some sort of an issue can't understand what's needed. So they need people with the disabilities to actually say what's needed. You know, that, that the points that we raised are, are deep. They're deeper than actually what we're going to get into tonight. Um, but I'm actually recording them, um, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, in order to uh, communicate them. Uh, it's an interesting, it's so interesting in the fact that the development and future of yours and other boxing clubs are kind of built on what we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about giving funding for inclusivity. And in order to do that, we know from speaking to a lot of our members that some of them won't know what to do with this fund. So with exactly what you're talking about, having those voices on the club's committee and having pathways for people with differing abilities for those positions on your club's committee can provide those voices and provide that direction and assistance for more people with disabilities and require extra steps for inclusion. So yeah, listen, we are we are really getting into the nitty gritty and uh, we haven't even started with the presentation. So well done guys, like this is amazing stuff. Um, please feel free to, to keep lobbing stuff at me um, as we go, this is this is amazing. Um, Gabe, that's cracking insight with regard to the funding. Um, I have scribbled that down, and I will be chasing that up. Thanks very much. Uh, so yeah, listen, we'll 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 get we'll get stuck into it. So the timeline, um, we circulated app applications there seventeen. So was that last week? Uh, this session is tonight, and then deadline is Friday. Anyone who has completed their application already, of which I have, just counting, seven so far, um, will know that this application is incredibly short. Um, the stages for review, um, clubs could complete and submit to us. We review, we submit to Sport Ireland. Simple enough. Second stage, Sport Ireland uh, confirmed the allocation to us in December of this year. Usually it's late in the year. Um, we communicate to successful clubs what they've received. And clubs will be given a window, usually to spend that allocation. It's typically less than 12 months. What we would advise here is what you've included in your application is what you look to draw down and spend the money on. Pretty simple, but it can be, it can be a bit tricky on the other side. Um, Funds to be used as requested, like I said, each item bought to benefit those with a disability. Okay, how applications will be judged, technical merits of application, quality, details, and sustainability of the application, size and strategic importance of the club, the 
area facility sharing, existing diversity of activity and membership. So in, in essence, if I am in a specific area and there's three or four clubs in my area, that will impact on the outcome of your application. If I'm in an area uh, and I haven't got a boxing club close to me, that will impact the outcome of it. Um, the existing club engagement with us, the IABA, with the with the NGB, um, the level, scope, and track record of program delivery by club, and existing governance and related models within club. Some of you might ask, what does that mean? What exactly does that look like? You guys operate at a certain level of government governance on a, on a year by year basis, and you do that actually through your affiliation. So. Um, I'll get into some of the specifics a little bit later, but there are kind of minimum requirements. Luckily, we as an NGB actually ask you to hit them anyway. So all of our clubs are eligible for, for this fund. Uh, these are them. Uh, child safeguarding statement to place, children's officer in place, coaching relevant volunteers uh, who work with uh, underage vulnerable members uh, to be guard vetted. So we ensure that's already in place before you guys are approved for your affiliation and luckily anybody who is affiliated is in this place anyone who has additional members that join at a later stage who require guard vetting or if a club has changed children's officer or whatever has changed in the meantime uh, we work with them on a one-to-one -one basis to effectively get them up to the essential criteria any questions sir Good to go. All right. Um, what can be applied for? So uh, this is in essence it. Um, uh, the initiation enhancement of disability specific activities, minimum 1,000, maximum 5,000 euro, and for education training, program activation and delivery, uh, small scale equipment and infrastructure. Um, what I've done is I've uh, compiled what I think could be the most common items um again like i said i'm going to throw it out to you guys uh for ideas for sharing with each other and with anyone else even me and we'll work with you guys to effectively agree this okay so i'll just launch into that um these are some of those examples so actually at the top you see those headings education training program activation delivery equipment and infrastructure and um, what I've done is I've broken them down into specific examples there. So education training, IBA coach education courses. Um, as you know, we've recently relaunched the pathway. So they are applicable um, for inclusion under this safeguarding courses, disability specific courses. Gabe, this was my thunder you were stealing. Um, CARA LSPs in particular uh, run these courses. Uh, you can, um, depending on what county you're in, you can put in uh, Galway, for example. Sorry, Gabe, I'll use you. Uh, Galway Sports Partnership, and you can check out their Facebook, Instagram, website, whatever it is, and they will communicate a calendar of events usually. Um, they'll partner typically with CARA in delivering those disability inclusion or disability awareness training or autism in sports, um, all applicable under this grant. Uh, program activation and delivery. So ideas, initiatives to increase participation uh, for people with disabilities. Um, example, inclusive training sessions, summer, Halloween, Christmas camps for people with disabilities. Um, links to local special schools and disability services. And you see the asterisks in there, sustainable ones. So in essence, not just a once off, not something that's just going to be a bit of money thrown up against the wall, genuine deep links that you guys can agree with your local schools and services. Um, we are partnering on delivering regular, regular stuff. Um, inclusive bro boxing in your club. Um, again, last week we just launched our High Five Boxing Academy. Um, I've included the register your interest link in here. Um, open to all of our boxing clubs in uh, in the island of Ireland. Um, anyone can sign up to this. With it will be provided um, 
the direction templates for inclusion, how to advertise your club to attract people with disability for the program and operational instructions as well. So um, that one in particular is a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. Any of the costs included in, in, in getting that up and running is included in this, in this uh, grant. Equipment and infrastructure, small-scale infrastructure stuff, accessible toilets, ramps. Um, I've included IT and virtual infrastructure. This um, actually came up in a uh, info session with Sport Ireland where somebody asked, um, we have members that have visual or sensory uh, impairments and we would like to adapt our website to for those people can we include that in this 100 percent, absolutely um, so that might extend to a club's uh social media page um, training education research around how to make your social media more adaptable for those kind of things and then signage is there as well um, for the club wall entrance way um signage for the car park the ideas are just ideas okay um so sensory equipment there uh communication boards i mentioned already uh increasing number of members with autism sensory disability sorry i i tell a lie i didn't mention the communication boards um for anybody who uh works with people with sensory uh disabilities um they are effectively kind of like medium-sized whiteboards that can be used to to draw or to uh, explain things in a bit more uh, visual way um yeah yeah and that's just the the the, the consequence of that so uh boxing equipment also applicable gloves pads bags and accessible fitness equipment cara on their website uh, they provide a specific document for accessible uh, equipment for your your gym or your, your fitness studio. So that's there. And then just underlying principles there. Will the grant help what you're already doing in the club? Will it help those with disabilities attract to your club? Will it bring them into your club? And these are the kind of things that are applicable. Um, Sport Ireland have confirmed tracksuit clothing will not be considered. That is the only concrete example that they have said is excluded from the grant, if that makes sense. Um, anything that can be thought of that has a case for helping people with disability either come to your, to your gym initially or implement something that you guys are, sorry, a bolts or something that you guys are already implementing um, will be considered. So yeah. Any questions there, guys? Just in regards to that, uh, it's great to see equipment being put in there for a change because Sport Ireland don't fund uh, equipment, kind of more or less. But it's again, it's great to see the little bit of flexibility there because the equipment will differ uh, slightly. And just regarding the technology stuff as well, is actually the e-readers that uh, for visually impaired and so forth, um, they don't read photographs or screenshots. So it's an interesting one with that. And I, I found out myself through a friend of mine who has a visual impairment, I sent him a screenshot and he takes back and he goes, my e-reader won't read screenshots. So it's just for your information and be learning a bit every day. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Gabe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, a, that's a great example there. Um, and yeah, I agree. Um, I think, I think it's I think it's brilliant that they um, the Sport Ireland have have kind of allowed such flexibility with this. I mean, on their end, administratively, they've sunk themselves a bit because of the probably hundreds of thousands of queries they're going to get over what's applicable here. But in essence, if you're ticking a box that is getting people with disabilities to your club or keeping them within your club. Um, seems to be applicable it seems to be um uh, good to go um so i think that's pretty much me done uh 25 past so we have done well the application itself 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it and give you guys a brief uh, snapshot of it, okay? This is it here. Nothing in this will be will be new on the back of what we've just gone through. A bit of GDPR. Essential criteria already gone through. What's applicable, what we've gone through. And any follow-ups can be made to, to Kira. Like I said, the deadline is this Friday. The name of the person filling out the application should be the person filling out the application. The title position of that person within the club, contact number, email address, club name, outline your proposal. This is, in essence, what you're going to say, what you're going to do. Um, an overview of how the funding will be utilized. So please be as specific as possible here. Um, if you're unsure, Google, Google, Google products, Google equipment. Um, going back to our uh, presentation for training, um, if anyone's got any questions over how much things cost, don't hesitate to give me a bell, James at iaba.ie. Uh, my contact details I'll, I'll show at the end of this. Um, and yeah, so effectively, that's it. Please outline pretty much what you're going to do and how much it costs. Um, and then insert the total amount being applied for. So after you finish number seven here, how you're going to spend the money, you will have calculated it up. Whip out the calculator, pop it in here. Um, you're going to click yes. Going to click yes and then submit. Any questions there, guys? Oh, I'll take that as a no. So I'll just quickly return to... Uh, Slideshow. Over to you guys. <laughs> I realize I've absolutely blitzed through this. Um, so if you guys don't have anything that jumps to mind immediately, um, like I said, I'm going to leave you with my contact details. You can be more than uh, welcome to contact me afterwards um just off the top of your heads i might actually pick your brain if that's okay uh can i ask you guys what you think you may apply for um so i'll i'll just throw a few, a, a few things in there it's um one of the, you know, the merit behind this program is if you have somebody with a disability, you know, or any kind of an impairment, um, currently they're restricted enough, the sport doesn't offer, you have your mainstream, you know, wheelchair sports and, and so forth, but this goes, this little, and it gives the option to a person but when you have, when you are compromised, be it mobility wise or, um, you know, be it autism or you know, whatever uh, disability or impairment or whatever it might be, is you're not what you call as healthy as you can be as you are compromised. But if you can get a person with a disability as fit as they can be, you actually sort out a problem for the HSE and, and hospitals and so forth because now you're healthier and fitter. Obesity is a main thing, you know, with a lot of people with disabilities due to lack of mobility and, and due to um, lack of options in sport. Um, not everybody is for, you know, wheelchair basketball, um, I think there's possibly two other coaches that I know in the IABA who are amputees, the same as myself, um, and there could be more. Um, the uh, it is a fantastic option there, especially for you know younger children and so forth, for the inclusion thing, 
and to give them the options and you're probably fairly well aware of it yourself, James, that, you know, with the dropout in sport and so forth, it's harder to get them back than it is, you know, to try and hold on to them. But if you get somebody with a disability, with limited options and so forth, they will give you 110% attendance rate and, and so forth. And I've noticed it myself. And I can forward you on uh, some of the brochures um, that Cara do. And there's about 10 or 11 different um, and you, you can circulate themselves because they are on the Cara website. But one of the best ones that I've ever done was the coaching with autism and life in general. It's slowing it down enough uh, for everyone and not just disabilities when, you, when you're when you doing stuff. Um, to to uh, I, I actually row with somebody who has autism and I was wondering why you know, we weren't communicating that well, so I'd done the course. And now the same fella, he wasn't very verbal at the time, but now I can't stop him from talking. So it, it, it just goes, you know, when you think a little bit outside the box, but that's where this thing is here. It, it is what you make it yourself, but you allow the participant themselves to tailor uh, their initial needs. And, and it's for a change to see a little bit more flexibility in in forms and so forth. So that's just my my top and centers. I understand. Nice one, Gabe. Appreciate that. And listen, this particular grant can be used towards accessible forms. Grant. Um, I'm thinking of registration for your club, for getting involved, for even um, training for your members, disability awareness training for your members yeah. to to allow that. Um, huge huge opportunities there. And in particular, um, I'm just going to tack this on, but with, with the um, with the High Five program, we'll need people to run that in clubs. Head coaches will have already tons to do. All their time in clubs is already wrapped up. So we'll need more people in, which means we'll need more coaches in, which means we'll need more coaching courses, which we're starting to get back on track with. So again, coaching course fees are applicable under this grant. So please... Uh, guys go for it uh, Debbie yeah no I was thinking it like it's the coaches and the volunteers that actually need educating as to how to deal with people that have say we have a few kids in our club with autism and um, one or two with ADHD and you know I don't think any of us would really know how to deal with them any differently or how to bring them out of themselves to be able to give the best that they can give, if you know what I mean. And I think Absolutely. the training would be a big thing for us anyway. I don't know about any other club yeah, or so cool. than equipment or anything else, just to know how, how to deal with these people and interact with them. That's a great show. Um, we've been collecting for the last three years inclusion data from you guys in affiliation uh, autism is the most common disability we see um, in terms of membership within our clubs so that's a it's a really relevant point Debbie thanks very much yeah yeah absolutely so definitely training is is is, is right up there um, yeah like I said uh, like Gabe said uh, originally uh, disability inclusion training uh, my, I took, undertook it last night actually and so did seven other uh, of our coach developers within the IABA. So um, there was one or two from Connacht there, actually. Uh, yeah, so uh, listen, we know that it's uh, really, really valuable. Um, so yeah, definitely applicable. Um, and if you want to apply for all of the funding, Debbie, for training, no problems. Yeah, no, problems. no problem. Um, I'll touch your phone. <laughs> just a just, just a, a, another piece of info and uh, sorry to keep lashing info at you guys but um if you wanted to apply for uh, equipment and you wanted to apply for a training you can do that that's no problem um if you wanted to say put four thousand towards training and then a thousand for gloves for example for uh, an inclusion program that's grant and will so, Cara be able to tell us if there's any specific equipment that would benefit these people or like, how do we find out what would benefit? Very glad you asked. Um, I had it up earlier. Um, 
and I told myself to have it ready, which I didn't. But here it is. Um, guidelines for accessible equipment. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So this document is available on their website. And I will record that question, Debbie. And I will send this on after this. Is that okay? Yeah, that'd be great. Gabe's a step ahead. <laughs> that, Goodbye, that, Gabe. That, Fair play to you. <laughs> that's actually every one of their courses uh, uh, into a binder. Uh, oh, right. Between the, I can send that on to you, James. It's uh, a bit of everything. I think is absolutely brilliant. Awesome. Awesome. That is very good. That is um, I'd love that game, please. Yeah, just I'll, I'll I'll just give you a little brief outline of the numbers we're talking here. Now, when you think disabilities, you'll be surprised when you hear how big it is. And this is going from the 2016 census that 643,000 people in this country registered a disability, be it physical, mental. Now, that is actually 13.5% of the population. Strange. The, the current census, when they have it all correlated and so forth, with some of the new spectrums brought into it and going on the ADHD and some of those other ones, um, they reckon it will increase to 20%, which is quite alarming. Yeah. And sport is a great way to channel uh, energy, you know, for bar people. Um, mine is acquired. I I had my leg amputated 13 years ago, and it's it, it's work in progress uh, all the time because today you don't learn something you didn't do all by that day. <laughs> but uh, I can only speak on my own disability, and I have a friend of mine who's another above knee amputee. Now. And this is what I say about individualizing it. Um, I need adoptions in my care, you know, to drive it. He's an above knee amputee. He doesn't. I'm missing me throttle foot. He's not. So that just goes to show you, you know, that one size does not fit all. Yeah. And uh, I think it's exactly what you were speaking there earlier. You know, the interactive storyboards and so forth, you know, to demonstrate a visual thing for exercise and so forth would be one of the things um you know because you know you take the autism it's it's just thinking a different way it, it that's really what it is to me they just um decipher whatever images and so forth in a different way but it's more simple there but again i would ask somebody with autism what's the easiest way for me to describe this and they don't be long telling you um, so it kind of coach, coachy, bounce off each other to get the best, um, and and you know you that means inclusion with them as well because you're taking on board what they're saying because for far too long it's been the other way around. An able-bodied society has been telling people with disabilities how to have their disabilities. Again, I couldn't lecture anybody about disabilities. Uh, I can only speak about my own. That right, that right, yeah, absolutely. And, and listen, this is uh, this is the wonderful thing about CARA, isn't it? That they um, they bring people in with disabilities to instruct them and guide them on their strategy, um, and then they look to implement that strategy off the back of that information. So, listen, this is uh, like we said at the beginning, this is this is a, a small step in the direction. Um, yeah, yeah, in the in the longer term having in really inclusive boards committees in in all levels of our organization is is gold standard and the the sooner we can recognize that uh the sooner we can get those people into our club to drive that it, the better um and to do so take disability inclusion training one of the things they mentioned on the training is are you open for people with disabilities? Are you advertising that you specifically would like people with disabilities in your club? Are you welcoming of that? Are you communicating that message? Simple as simple as we're open for all on your Facebook page. Um, very, very, very basic stuff, but 
Um, something that we overlook a lot. Um, cool. Uh, Megan, are you there? Would you like to? Would you like to share? If not, no probs. Uh, you can use the um, the chat function if you like, Megan. Um, guys, that is it. This is my contact details. I believe a lot of you have them already. If you don't, um, let me know or at least give me a shout so I can include you on um, the uh, communication list. I hope we have something coming through here. No problem, Megan. Uh, your microphone's not working. Um, if you want to provide anything that you, you think yourselves, uh, your club might apply for there, Megan. And yeah, Debbie, Gabe, Megan, I'd love your feedback as well on the examples that I gave um, as to what you can apply for, because I definitely didn't think of everything. However, I did do a fair amount of research to try and cover what our boxing, what might be most applicable to our boxing clubs. Um, so I wouldn't mind that. Um, what I'll do at the moment is, cool, we have, Mess from Megan. Um, accessible equipment for members with physical and intellectual disabilities. Cool. Happy days. Um, like I mentioned in that uh, document that CARA provide, um, they provide what standard equipment looks like. They provide what accessible equipment looks like, and then they kind of go one step further to to show what truly inclusive equipment looks like. So there's great examples in there. Um, from treadmills to bikes to rowers to uh, all sorts of stuff from uh, medicine balls for example everybody thinks that a medicine ball is just a, a big heavy ball but a medicine ball can have handles on it for example for somebody with um, cerebral palsy um, so that they can grip it um, and and use that as uh, an exercise device what's other examples kettlebells uh, as well would be kind kettlebells. Of great show yeah absolutely um I had, a, I had loads of examples there that just popped out of my head. But um, that is, that's it for me, guys. If you have anything else, um, that would be great. I'm going to stop recording now. If that's cool. Um...